uh, the difference between Hashimoto's treatment for thyroid and those who are just slightly subclinical hypothyroid because they're, they're kind of two different things with two different approaches. We're going to discuss it after this, so keep watching. Welcome to Balance My Hormones, where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and also leaving comments on your experiences, and we'd be happy to talk about it on the next video. So today I'm here with a friend, Dave Lee. He's uh, his own expert in his own right on TRT and health and fitness. Um, Dave, uh, welcome to the, to the channel. I wanted to talk to you, that's a good point, about uh, the difference between Hashimoto's treatment for thyroid and those who are just slightly subclinical hypothyroid because they're, they're kind of two different things with two different approaches from, from what I understand. And, and you know, my symptoms or even the symptoms of Hashimoto's don't always reflect on a massive elevation of antibodies because you may have missed the window to, to measure those antibodies is what we've, we've come across. And I, personally for me, I had all the symptoms of it and, and my treatment goes to having a, a much higher dose of thyroid so that the thyroid is actually not doing the job but the medication is taking over. So now you no longer have a target for the antibodies to attack. That, that's the tricky thing with antibodies is that you know when we're measuring antibodies for thyroid, uh, you're measuring them at that snapshot in time when you've got the blood pool. So a lot of the time you need multiple panels for this. Same with thyroid. I mean, thyroid fluctuates a lot, you know, day to day. So it's one of the reasons why I use waking temperatures a lot when I'm looking at thyroid. I like to look at blood work and waking temperatures and symptoms. And that way I can go, okay, like that's the cool thing about waking temperatures is we can get another point of data that we can work with the blood work to go, okay, we've now got a bit more of a picture here that, you know, you can do every day at home and get the average. You know, most people, 99.9% well, .9 of people are not going to go get a thyroid blood panel done every, every, every day for two weeks. Um, and they shouldn't because that's obsessive. But the issues with, with Hashimoto's is Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition. Um, and Hashimoto's is more common in women, but it definitely does affect men, and which is why a lot of practitioners don't look for it. But if you've got issues with Hashimoto's, you do have to shut the thyroid down, in, this is my opinion. You do have to shut the thyroid down because otherwise that, that autoimmune attack is going to be causing a stress response and, and that is going to cause an underlying level of anxiety. So when it comes to Hashimoto's, I go a lot deeper with that. I often do food intolerance testing to work out if that's a factor as well. And I find that when you eliminate the food intolerance, then the Hashimoto's antibodies go away. And then if the, if the, the, the way that I, I explain this is that like, if you've got Hashimoto's, basically your autoimmune system, if you imagine like a whole army of these little guys and they've all got AK-47 machine guns, they're firing at your thyroid, but they think that that's a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. So they think they're doing a good job, but they're not. So what's happening is if you just top up your thyroid hormone, then you're going to feel better, but those guys are still wrecking your thyroid. So your thyroid function is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse over time, which means that your dose has to change over time. So what we look at doing is calling off that autoimmune attack as, as best as possible by addressing the diet, addressing stress as well. That's also a huge one. Um, but working out what that underlying stress factor is and hopefully eliminating that. But then also looking at going, okay, do we actually need to shut the, the TSH down to zero to get the T3 levels up high enough to actually resolve your symptoms, bring your temperatures up and so forth? And in the vast, vast, vast majority of cases, that is a yes. Yeah, and that's, that's what happened to me. I reduced gluten, I reduced, I reduced dairy, and also the high amount of thyroid hormone, uh, T3, T4, to bring the TSH down to zero. But, um, you know, to the general practitioner, they would see my, my blood test and think, oh my God, I've got hyperthyroidism. And that's a whole nother thing we can talk about in another video, how frustrating it is with the standard medical community when they don't really understand what they're looking at uh, on blood yeah. tests. <laughs> and that, that's the big thing I, I see when I inherit thyroid patients is like, they'll be like, oh yeah, I've got, I've got you know, Hashimoto's or I've got hypothyroidism. So I'm taking, you know, 25 micrograms of T4. And I'm like, that's nothing for what you've got going on need a shit ton more than that and they go oh but i feel better i'm like there's so much on the table and that's the thing that i see with thyroid is that you know practitioners will reluctantly treat it but because they're not comfortable with what they're doing which i think is a good thing like if you're not comfortable don't go heavy-handed but work with someone who is comfortable is you you've got to actually resolve the hypothyroidism not just put a bit of thyroid hormone in there it would be like resolving someone's low testosterone by bringing their testosterone up to the bottom of the reference range when it was below that it's like, yeah, you're better off, but it's not where it should be. So my understanding then in subclinical hypothyroid, as we've seen some doctors do, is just literally top up a little bit 
it slightly brings down the TSH. We see a higher level on trough of T, uh, free T4 to free T3, and it seems to resolve many of the symptoms. So not everyone needs to be on the Hashimoto's therapy because obviously they don't have Hashimoto's. And that was the other type. So some people can do very well with just a slight increase of 25 micrograms of, of, of T4, levothyroxine, maybe 50, maybe 75 um, in, in those cases. Is that what you've seen in, in your practice? Yeah, I, I don't see many Hashimoto's cases because it's just not that common in men. And um, But I see a lot of subclinical hypos. So yeah, basically the idea is like, I, I like to look at the waking temperatures and the lab work, but even if you just went off labs, the idea is that you'd go, and of course symptoms as well, you'd be going, okay, well, you look at the ratio of T4 to T3. I like to use a blend of T4, T3, but it depends on the individual. But yeah, you're trying to bring primarily free T3 up and bring TSH down under one. And if, you know, let's say someone has like a TSH of like, you know, 2.4, 2.5, they've got hypothyroid symptoms, their T3 is low. A lot of the time, if you just top up that thyroid function and bring it up to like the upper quartile of the range, sometimes it needs to go a bit higher depending on where the range is. Um, and you bring that TSH down under one, you can have a situation where the individual's got, you know, I don't, I don't know what the exact split would be, but let's say half their natural thyroid function and then half their topped up thyroid function, and that brings them up to optimal. So that's what I do personally. So I just use 25 micrograms of T3. In Australia, I would be using a blend of T4, T3, but it's just very easy to get over here. Um, and 25 micrograms of T3 brings my TSH from like a 2.3, 2.4 down to like a 0 0.6, 0 0.7 brings my T3 right up to the top of the range, sometimes just scraping over it, but feel markedly, markedly better. Yeah, mine's a little bit different for the Hashimoto's, but um, a, bit, a bit higher dose than, than that. But uh, again, I feel markedly better than I had ever had. And, and I knew there was a time when I was just lacking energy, even after coming back from the gym, where normally I'd be reinvigorated. So anyway, this is a very fascinating topic. Be seen by a doctor. If you need TRT coaching, you've got Balancer Hormones and, and, and Daigley, and we're here to, uh, here to help. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and um, any comments about your experiences or your journey on TRT, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. So thanks again, Dave, for coming on. Uh, we'll see you next time.